Hello, everybody. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really sorry about the delay and everything here on this. Um, this is actually um, a really interesting topic, um, and uh, I'm not sure how to go about explaining this. Um, it's... Uh, 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 so yeah, it, it, if you're not familiar um, with the Earth, um, and I say that in all seriousness um, to myself as well, um, that uh, you know there's basically uh, a lot going on here. Uh, I, I was looking at um, an idea about. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm really sorry about this. I'm gonna go take a walk, um, and uh, you know we have the sun is setting right now here, uh, where I live, um, and uh, just gonna go think about some things here uh, before we have this, uh, <coughs> excuse me, really serious discussion, um, and um, yeah, and uh, you know I, I would just say that uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna talk about a lot of things here in a moment. Um, and um, please try to take it very seriously, um, the discussion. Um, and, uh, uh, and yeah, we're, we're, we're generally going to uh, look at uh, the uh, electromagnetic spectrum for our planet um, and kind of look at some details uh, that I've been uh, studying over the past few years, um, and some of them hopefully will be uh, extremely interesting to you um, in terms of how we understand our planet. Um, so, and, and I really want it to be as absolutely fun and an app absolutely hilarious as possible, but also extremely serious, so that you're kind of sitting on the edge of your seat and about ready to just um, kind of re-understand everything in our lives um, here on the planet. So I can't really stress this enough, but uh, uh, but yeah, it really depends on you. So this discussion here uh, tonight that we're going to have and uh, really how much uh, uh, and everything that's going to be happening in our discussion. So I'm going to go take a walk. I'll be right back, and I hope uh, you can really think about these details. So, again, uh, you know, I'm really sorry uh, to leave you here uh, for a moment uh, just staring off into this uh, map here. Um, and But I'm going to try to take a quick walk and be right back. But uh, please try to think about this for a moment um, before uh, we discuss all this is that essentially we live on this planet earth right um, and uh, this gigantic piece down here Antarctica uh, kind of looks like the shape of a brain uh, and it turns out that on the North Pole there's basically nothing on the North Pole but then there's uh, Antarctica on the South Pole um, turns out that uh, that's not the only way to look at Earth in terms of the poles. Um, you know, there it's a sphere, uh, and uh, you know, as as important as Antarctica is, um, it occurred to me in one of the other discussions uh, that uh, the equator is very important in terms of life. So it's really ironic uh, that a lot of the research that I've done. Uh, my brother stopped over and visited me today, and or I, I maybe stopped with him the other day, uh, and I just realized, you know, okay, I, I've been studying Antarctica, and uh, why why have I not really understood anything else about the Earth? You know, obviously, uh, our Earth is alive. Um, it's connected to the universe, and it's connected spiritually to the universe. Um, but, like, what's really going on here? So uh, we're going to look at some details um, called... Uh, so, so basically, the axis is. You see this line, this zero line right here. There's all these numbers here. Zero line right down the center here as well. Uh, latitude and longitude. Um, so uh, it's kind of weird because uh, you know we all we all uh, uh, you know there's just a lot to study here. So I'll be back 
uh, in a bit. Thanks. So, uh, just uh, something funny before we get into all the serious things. Uh, I saw my brother the other day. I'm wearing a funny shirt. Uh, it says, not afraid to ask hard questions. And at the bottom, which you can't see, it says Cornerstone Magazine. And uh, my brother's a geologist, and if you know anything about geology, he pointed, I didn't even realize this until he pointed out to me how funny the shirt is. Uh, so, uh, he's a geologist, and Cornerstone is a rock that's the most important rock in a building. Uh, it's the first rock that you lay. Sometimes they put the date AD or... BC on the stone and if that stone supposedly gets pulled the whole thing collapses um, but what I wanted to mention here is that we're gonna talk about a little bit of the astrophysics of our planet Earth uh, and what I wanted to mention is that no matter who you talk to in the future or whatever kind of universal ideas that you're looking at um, the ideas that we're about to look at will probably be around for thousands or even millions of years. Uh, our planet is going to be, uh, it's a very important planet here. It's our only, uh, there's some protests uh, in our town about anti-war protests every Friday that I attend. And they always put up this sign, or sometimes they put up, there is no planet B. And uh, that's kind of true if you think about it. We don't really have another planet that we're going to live on like earth anytime soon or even ever um and what i wanted to mention is just about the universality of this discussion um we're connected we've been flying around the universe here for billions of years perhaps um depending on who you talk to and even creationists uh believe that the planet was created in seven days and certainly the, with the laws of astrophysics we don't know it could have been created in seven days who knows um there could have been some really amazing events that really change astrophysics uh for instance the side of a black hole or other things so i i wanted to really uh discuss a couple things with you here uh we're looking at what's called the declination field i'm going to talk about that in specific uh this is the field intensity of our planet uh we're going to try to talk about the aurora this is horizontal intensity this is a new concept to me and a new concept also published on NOAA. so they didn't usually publish that uh, field diagram until very recently the last few months or the last year inclination is another idea uh, that you should be aware of. So we're gonna look at that. Um, but I'm really sorry I have to pause this for a moment. Um, and we're gonna go back in time for a moment here uh, to a discussion uh, that I had uh, about Satanism. Um, and hopefully it's not terribly frightening discussion to you. So. Uh, let, let, let's look at our Earth for a second here, okay? Um, this is the space rock that we live on, right? And uh, the interesting thing about our planet, Earth, uh, is that it's huge. Um, and you can see the Milky Way galaxy in the background here as I spin around the planet. And here's the North Pole, right? Uh, looking vastly different than the South Pole. Uh, and I'm sorry if this is really spinning your entire head and perception of everything here. Um, but I really struggled in school. Uh, I was a straight A student for the most part. Um, and, uh, you know, I hated school. I've always hated school. I've always hated getting education. And I hope you never, I hope you hang up on this internet thing immediately and start doing your own work and just look outside and go take a stroll down your neighborhood i just i just strolled down my neighborhood and i realized i'm going down main street here and heading past the hospital and we're gonna have a discussion tonight and and anyway so this is the poll uh but 
we had a discussion about how this works and if you're not familiar with this there's the aurora and actually the aurora was a fairly new concept a, a lot of people never even saw the aurora a lot of people on earth has not have never seen it um and essentially what i wanted to stress is there's a there's an aurora on the south pole typically we think of the aurora on the north pole um but there's also one on the south pole and there's also one on uh, other planets in fact almost every planet in our solar system uh and every planet throughout the universe has this thing called the aurora except for if the uh, electromagnetic field isn't strong enough to create these sparks kind of a circle or a halo around the planet um, and it, it occurred to me that uh i'm really sorry to talk about this uh so, so basically what I'm saying here, let's, let's, let's look at each other really honestly here, is that there's something really important going on in the universe here. I'm really sorry to be the one to tell you about this, but guess what? Uh, the universe is unbelievable, and we're kind of looking at one aspect here, and it's going to get way, way out there uh, in terms of conversation. And one thing I wanted to stress is that, uh, you know, we're not going to talk too much about the spirituality of our planet and i'm really sorry about that but uh you know and, and i'm and i'm gonna talk about that a little bit but you know what that's gonna get really out there uh in a moment but uh guess what uh all this astrophysics and stuff kind of comes back to earth uh and as you study the universe we're gonna see some connections uh, with the entire universe, uh, it's kind of like looking at a radio telescope. When you look at Earth, uh, this 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 guy right here has been connected to our solar system, to the sun. Uh, the aurora is spinning around. Glowing lights are are going around here. Glowing lights in the sky, right? Uh, how much evidence do you need for spirituality uh, other than glowing lights in the sky uh, and and just existence and, and a lot of things? So there's a lot of in very valuable things that we're going to talk about now africa uh is an interesting thing here uh in terms of uh the center of the map uh it really is uh, uh when we flatten out this map uh africa oftentimes is in the center of that uh, and then on one side we kind of have uh this weird pole where we could imagine a inward uh section here and maybe an outward section over here, as you can see, the, the ocean kind of comes out into a outward area there. So, uh, so hold on a second. I'm really sorry to say this, and I, and I feel like there's certain words that you should just never say, uh, like, you know, God, God's name, or and, and also uh, deal with topics like Satanism. But uh, we've done some bad things on Earth uh, here, and when you kind of... Uh, when we talk about a satanic access, uh, it's kind of a scary topic because, uh, you know, we're connected to the universe here and uh, life on our planet is connected uh, to the universe. Uh, and it's primarily along the equator here. And even in our galaxy, life is probably connected there as well. So let's look at three quick maps uh, to get us started here so if we had everyone agrees that there's an axis if you have a globe well, let me go get a globe for you hold on a second so here's a globe right and uh, I don't know if you can see this but here's the Sun right this little candle I, I usually put a candle near my globe globe spins around and uh, yeah, so it spins around here, and uh, l let's get the point across here. So, uh, almost everyone agrees that it spins on an axis, and that that axis is tilted about 23 and a half degrees, um, about like that, right? And uh, that is a very important axis, uh, 23. 0.45 or something like that, right? And uh, that axis doesn't change too much uh, at all, right? It may wobble a tiny bit. In this discussion, we're going to have a things, and I'm going to say, oh, a certain thing is true, but there's always some wobble in everything, or there's something 
not exactly perfectly perfect. Uh, but one question is that that's an axis that everyone agrees on. But what if there was something called a satanic axis, uh, an axis that was really unusual, uh, not really defined by uh, you know straight this way or even vertical towards you X Y Z. Uh, there's spherical coordinate systems. I, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but they're called radians. Uh, you use them a lot. Uh, sometimes you can describe everything that you can in one coordinate system, like the Cartesian coordinate system, X, Y, and Z. You can describe all that in spherical coordinate system. But what I wanted to say is that if there's a satanic axis, uh, like a third axis, right? So we have a, a, a North Pole, South Pole, but then what if there's like a wildlife pole? A pole, something that's like, like a spiritual, almost a spiritual axis here is what we're talking about, right? So we have all the things that we're familiar with, X, Y, Z, even a uh, coordinate system like, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a spherical coordinate system, but the question here is like we're really looking at something higher dimensional, uh, something spiritual, right? Uh, and it actually, uh, that has to make sense. Like it's not just a joke about spirituality. It has to be a real truth here, uh, and in some ways balance with the real things, and yet be totally out of bounds. Um, so uh, what we're looking at here uh, is a start of that discussion, uh, and and really. Uh, how one day, even thousands of years, we may look at Earth differently. Um, they call these the secular maps. I thought that was a hilarious name, uh, and uh, but that's the that's what scientists call them. Uh, and uh, what you're looking at here is the secular map. So what the heck is a secular map? Um, so if you're familiar with calculus. Um, or you're familiar with change, uh, a secular map is how how the fields change year to year. So let me explain to you that. So we have the actual compass, right? If you have a compass and it says north is this way every year, then that's the way north is. But the truth is that north, the North Pole moves a little bit every year uh, in terms of the direction and even the inclination, uh, how much the compass pulls into Earth or out of Earth, it's not the same all over our planet. So everywhere that you look, it's not the same. Uh, in fact, uh, the North Star is perhaps better. It's perhaps better to use the stars than it is to use the fields in some ways, but actually the fields are really valuable too. So. Well, let's be cautious about saying one thing better than another here on this discussion um, because there's definitely reasons on both sides. But, um, and I'm really sorry to have this discussion. My friend, uh, Dr. Will, is in the room here, uh, and I really need to pay attention. He's a, uh, he's a very, very interesting guy. But uh, what I wanted to stress here is these four maps. So let's look at the declination in particular. Uh, so this map, so let me be cautious, all right? So uh, I'm going to have to get out of, get out of, get out here and go for another walk. Sorry about this, but this map may look absolutely absurd to you, and I hope it does because you're going to hopefully make a map of your own after this discussion because you'll get really excited and you'll say, wow, um, I really want to look at this carefully. Uh these alternatives to essentially the spirituality of our planet and start to look at that um, and let's let's talk about uh, this for a second so the, the the religions on earth there's not a whole lot of religions on earth um, incidentally there is a lot there, there's there's a lot lot but there's actually quite some agreement uh, in general uh, with for example Christianity Islam, uh, Buddhism, and Hinduism, and then even uh, Zen, Tao, and uh, some other religions in Asia, including ancestors, ancestry, um, and these are all different ideas. But it turns out that this area right in here, uh, 
Let me see if I got a lightning map here. Um, hold on a second. Sorry about this. So, there's a very interesting thing. A lightning map. Uh, one interesting thing is that this lightning was not always the same way here on our planet. It probably was pretty similar to this. Um, but there's been, uh, if you believe that the fields change uh, over time on the planet, uh, these lightning areas are different. Um, I want to explain something right here. The actual, even though this looks like it's the most lightning, uh, there's actually quite a lot of lightning over here as well. Um, let me pause this in time. So I'm really too, sorry to show you this uh, zoomed in map that I've already labeled. Uh, you may want to look at that yourself and draw some of your own diagrams on this, but I, I don't, uh, it's really important to see that there's quite a lot of, there's, a, there's some debate on the amount of lightning and where it is and everything. So uh, certainly there's a lot of lightning here in the United States. Uh, and there's a lot of lightning right here through the jungle and here, um, and as well as all these areas. Um, but when you look at Earth, let's just imagine that none of that is true and there's actually, we need to think about carefully about what's really going on. So interestingly, here in South America where they get the most lightning uh, per square kilometer, uh, it collects because there's a kind of a C-shaped, it catches the lightning and it gets trapped because the clouds there's there's really hot air because this is near the equator and it gups gets closer to the mountain range and the sea breeze comes in and then it meets there and it, and it basically catches in a c-shaped thing now if you look at the the mediterranean and we're talking about the spirituality here uh is that a lot of this uh this whole u-shaped thing here coming in here trapped a lot of the clouds and the lightning perhaps right here in israel at one point in history and it's possible that uh israel collected right now there's always a lot of lightning that collects around italy here and here as well along greece's mountain range um, so the clouds kind of float in here sometimes and and actually in israel it's possible that uh Dome of the Rock at one point got a lot of lightning, and even where Jesus and Muhammad both stood, uh, there was a lot of lightning there at one point in history. So I'm really sorry to go through that topic so slowly and be like, uh, da, 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 da. but honestly, uh, this, this means that there could be a lot of weird things happening uh, here. So you can see some of the lightning actually collecting in Europe right there, but it could have been over there at some point. So uh, and actually, there, there's disagreements on uh, these maps. As you can see, that map does not match with this map, uh, showing uh, quite a lot of lightning here in Florida and as well up here in even Afghanistan. Uh, so, uh, and uh, down here in Singapore. So, the maps are not in agreement at all. Um, so, uh, and it really depends on the year and different factors. Um, so, uh, but. Uh, and I'm really sorry if I'm getting off topic here um, with this discussion, but again, uh, there, and, and I don't want you to focus primarily on just that. We need to see uh, the electromagnetic spectrum. So actually what we can see of the universe, uh, what we can't see of the universe is far greater. Um, it turns out that, uh, if you're aware of this, that the amount of the universe out there that we cannot see uh, is much vaster um, so uh, and that includes the black holes and some other things like the center of our galaxy so our galaxy is spinning around you know and actually the way it's spinning faster than the amount it's very easy to calculate how fast it should be spinning uh, based on all the light that we see and it actually is spinning faster much fa not just a little bit faster but much faster um, meaning that there's a lot more gravity in the center of the galaxy than we believe. So, uh, let's go back. I'm, I'm, I'll be back in a minute. I'm extremely sorry about this conversation, um, and I'm hoping to try to bore people as soon as possible. So, uh, I will try to uh, get back here and things, but uh, hopefully uh, you can uh, start looking at some of these details yourself. So, uh, let's go back to the declination. Um, so, put my hand up here like this and 
so the compass may actually tilt left or right and it can also go in or out the declination is actually a tendency for it to turn to work slightly off to the to one way or the other um, so actually what you find here is that along this green line here the compass works uh, correctly so it, it shows you where the exact north pole is in terms of the axis so it's not the magnetic pole that it points to but it points to the correct axis that we're actually spinning on so in some ways when you get out to uh, over here you're talking about a 80 degree 70 degree shift uh, a, a 90 degree shift is like that so that means the con the needle will actually turn 90 degrees off <laughs> you can see 70 degrees 60 degrees zero degrees so it's correct on this point it's 20 degrees off in the Amazon here and for the most part it's correct in the jungle here and it's off by negative 20 um, so uh, and you can see uh, look at the details to see uh, the positive or negative side so uh, what that basically suggests is that uh, we don't know right uh, and I'm really sorry because I need to get offline here and start talking about some other things but uh, but basically uh, why it's off, uh, we don't know. Uh, I, I mean, it's, it's probably because of uh, factors like the aurora. Um, but even the aurora uh, changes quite a lot every day. Uh, you know, it can float all the way down south or it can be all the way far north uh, in the same ways here. Um, and actually, uh, these fields are changing quite a bit. Um, and the moon keeps spinning around and yet it stays fairly constant at negative 10 or positive 10 and yet every 30 days the moon is spinning around us so we don't really know what's going on uh, why these fields are the way they are or anything uh, there's it's a, it's a huge discussion uh, but in terms of this other axis if we were spinning this way and the axis was perfect um, this is a secular diagram and uh, you know I, I know there's some people really struggling with some problems right now and uh, I'm kind of afraid um, you know to discuss some of these seriousness of some people's problems um, but it may actually be partly due to uh, problems spiritual uh, you know sometimes you may really get stuck in a certain idea and you're like oh it's got to be this way logically uh, and I'm so sure of it and people have even gotten into some very serious problems logically um, recently so um, what I'd recommend is really rethinking about how the earth works and there's basically a third access that we are not a spiritual access a satanic access or a wild access or a wild life access so whatever you want to call it um, there's these the, the thing is, is if I stand up you know I, I stand on two legs right and uh, if the interesting thing is if you add a third leg to that it becomes balanced universally um, and the interesting thing is that if you have a new axis that's not part of this what everyone's talking about access the zero line here everyone agrees on zero but what if there's something else mysterious going on inside of our planet uh, and it's very complicated uh, in terms of what's happening uh, with the astrophysics here so if we have a satanic pole uh, or an axis uh, through the life field so I've been talking about this a little bit um, but if there is life connected to the universe uh, or universally one question is how would that work um, and I don't know exactly but one suggestion I was talking with my aunt about this who has passed away uh, she lived in Egypt uh, for a little while and she was a professor out in uh, Keene University uh, in New York it's a very funny university Sound, sounds like the word smart but they say Keene just outside of Manhattan um, she used to take her students into Manhattan and they would eat at a little restaurant there a Middle Eastern restaurant um, but 
uh, so there's a lot of things we're not talking about, right? So one of the discussions here is that it is with a conflict, right? So the Middle East may actually be connected. Uh, one, one of the debates here is uh, in terms of the astrophysics of our entire planet, right? And if we are connected uh, to the universe, which we definitely are, uh, you know, we're, we're here on this planet, the Middle East section may actually be connected to the middle of our universe um, in some senses. Uh, so uh, it's, it's some ideas like that uh, that we need to start thinking about because uh, we're like attacking the middle of our universe and maybe that's not a good thing to be at war uh, at all, right? Um, and, uh, and I'm sorry to hear my friend uh, and, and things, but... Uh, you know, if you're trying to travel around the universe uh, spiritually, you're trying to leave this planet someday, and you're at war uh, with something really out in deep space, that's not a good situation. You should probably not be at war. There's probably asteroids out there. There's probably huh, all kinds of things out as you try to travel around the universe spiritually. Uh, but uh, basically, let's go back to this image here, is that these... Uh, the inclination is the amount of pull into the earth and again this is a secular chart we're going to look at let's clarify all this for you so I'm really sorry to go through all these images uh, and this is basically a huge discussion but uh, the declination field is the skew left or right okay uh, the inclination, which is this one, is the amount of skew in. So if you think about it, when you're right on the equator, your compass is not, it's going to be flat, right? And you can see that there's zero there. As you get closer and closer to the North Pole, the electromagnetic field is either going to pull it in or push it out. And it actually turns out that the magnetic pole down here and the magnetic pole in the North Pole, it will actually push it out here and your compass will shift uh, either up or down. And it actually goes uh, almost, uh, you can see here, 80, 90 degrees. So it could flip essentially perfectly straight up on your magnetic compass. That's unbelievable. Think about it for a second, right? You're, these magical fields are somehow moving a metal object exactly the opposite direction on one pole or the other. That should seem a little bit strange to you. You can't see it, but it's doing something. And a lot of this could be even ionizing radiation, which could be deadly. And I don't recommend visiting the North Pole or the South Pole because of that, uh, because it's ionized. It could be ion partly ionizing. It, it splits molecules. It makes the ozone, the, the, the color of our sky, is due to the... Uh, the field like we actually have the ozone because of the aurora so look at this line here it's not perfect right the equator is right here at zero this is zero line right here and notice the actual zero line is quite a bit above here and it's actually right on the correct line in the amazon so the amazon actually has a closer correct it's not the compass will lay flat in the amazon whereas in uh the Congo, it would be shifted up or down depending on which side you're on. So, uh, and you can see it's slightly, uh, uh, actually was a negative there. So throughout most of that, it's actually negative pulling uh, perhaps in there. So, uh, and, and you can see that there's also a little anomaly right down here near the tip of Africa. And this actually extends through the tail of Antarctica here and it comes through here. That's a very important shape and you can see uh, here I kind of circled a weird section here, um, and and hopefully it's not frustrating to you. You'll start to think about why uh, some of these areas are a little bit different and why it may be pulled in uh, some of these other areas. So that's inclination. It should be fairly easy for you to understand that it's going to push the compass up or down, and that's the field of Earth. Uh, and actually, that's kind of a spiritual truth, right? It's not something we can see. It's actually a spiritual force um, here that we're talking about. It's definitely true. So, uh, and this declination, so if you're standing on the planet, it might swerve it one way or the other. And I want to tell you kind of a really interesting story. Um, I, one of my first things to actually 
do was to go to this zero line here um, and I felt great it was really interesting uh, my brain was working better uh, and it was crazy I was just like wow uh, it, it was up pretty far north in, in a place called Duluth Minnesota and this line runs right through the tip there and it's very mysterious and let's just show you on a map so one interesting thing is that this North American, South America, you can see it kind of runs down the center here. And actually, if we were to redraw this line, it might actually run like this up to the North Pole. So it actually may not run. This is just the way that the field looks right now. But over long terms, uh, because we see some of the uh, geophysics and the volcanic activity of the above above the ocean activity being along this line so it makes sense that this this green line would be right down the center here now the other thing i want to mention so you can quickly remember this this shape here and this shape here kind of looks like a v and this looks like a u and i call this the u there's a u shape here and a v i call this the uv pattern um to really remember on all planets um we can kind of say there may be a similar shape because we're actually talking about astrophysics here of what's going on on other planets uh, and even how we might connect with other planets spiritually someday. So, uh, you know, I started a small moving company in Chicago and I always wanted to get everyone off the planet and why not just move to another galaxy um, spiritually? How are we going to do that? So uh, we're kind of beginning some discussions into that right now as we talk and these are kind of the end times and what we might do. Uh, correct to actually do these things for real so uh, again right here you can see this kind of goes down through here and this line kind of goes down here part of this V part but it swerves out towards Singapore and then back down to the south magnetic pole there and it's pretty easy to remember the south magnetic pole because of this so uh, again I wanted to re-emphasize this is that this guy here kind of looks like a brain we have a cerebellum and we have a spinal cord and we have another guy that kind of looks like a brain here turns out there's three sections and if we looked at every planet around the galaxy and around the universe no matter what we're going to have a south pole a north pole which is basically connected to uh north america here and i'm sorry i'm drawing these diagrams perhaps difficult to see uh but you can see there's similar shape here of south america to antarctica so these three sections the middle and the South Pole and North Pole. <clears throat> We're probably gonna have things like that on every planet, every, uh, around the universe. Um, so uh, there'll be different shapes and different things going on. And certainly it won't all look like this, uh, you know, um, but you can see it's kind of being chased here. And one thing you might see here is there's something on the magnetic pole, which is right here you see that there's this kind of guy here pointing right there to the magnetic pole and that's what we're looking at on that other uh, discussion and we basically have this boot a mysterious boot here that looks just like italy and and what i want to stress to you when you first start looking at maps you're going to see these things and let's start thinking about it a little bit more spiritually is really the discussion that we're having here when you look at our planet man that looks like a brain man this looks like a boot and what's happening here is it's essentially kicking this little island off here and there's a whole chain reaction going off into this area which is basically uh, a new axis and you see this triangle here that we're starting to see you can see the milky way back into here forming and you see this weird triangle here forming out of all this um, and I'm gonna load up even another couple details here and I'm really sorry to do this because it's going to take some time to load up uh, about a few hundred thousand data points uh, and I'm really sorry about this but uh, and it's maybe even struggling to do that right now sorry uh, oh wow so oh, uh, this is the uh, sorry this is temperature so I, I just added some temperature maps onto this you may really want to look at the temperature map uh, as well because uh, actually the temperature is related to uh, the sun, uh, right? So uh, these, it's actually almost too slow for me to do this on my computer. So there's just so much data here um, that, but you can start to see, uh, man, I'm really sorry about this. Yeah, so here you can start to see all the extent of this data. 
So basically what we're looking at here, and it's very slow on my computer right now because I got a video program going right now to try to give you this information and all that. So you can see that there's basically something very mysterious going on here. Uh, and you can see that boot here coming in. And let's bring this back to Antarctica here if we can get to that soft pole. So we're basically looking at right here now. This is that Tasmania, right? Uh, and we're looking at stuff that we've never been able to look at before in history. So what you're seeing here, this is stuff that they didn't have access to easily uh, even 10 years ago. So, And there's a major earthquake right here. And right here is where you get essentially the south magnetic pole. So I'm going to pull this in here and try to get this as so, and you can see there's almost a chase here between this and Australia and then now we're gonna go all the way over to here and there's a major earthquake spot right in here so not even really discussed much and we've discussed a possibility for having Antarctica University first in history a university kind of an outer space university right here on this island uh, and it's split you can see it's split in two halves just like the brain as I zoom in here, you can see there's a half here and a half here. And if you're interested in that, uh, one of my friends can maybe help you uh, discuss that. So, and the crazy thing about this is that look at what's happening here. There's a whole chain of mountain range coming all the way up here. And I'm going to zoom in here. These are some of the biggest earthquakes on the planet. Uh, we're talking about 9.0s coming through here. And I'm going to flip this around, and I'm sorry it's going to take a little bit to look at this but now we're looking at the opposite side here which is not nearly as earthquaked out of the planet and this other wildlife pole now this is if you looked at any of the maps of uh life on earth the coral reefs are basically in these this is the bahamas you can see the bright blue water coming in here and then puerto rico uh and you can fly pretty affordably to puerto rico um but you can see there's a huge gap in the ocean right here and look at all this earthquakes right along mexico kind of almost dwarfing what's going on in california um and this mountain range basically heads up all the way to the north pole and you can see here you're basically and I'm, my computer may even crash on me and i'm really sorry about that because we're looking at so much points look at that size of that earthquake right there 9.2 uh, perhaps the biggest earthquake that we've seen and then looking at the North Pole again right here. So uh, This is not the point of the discussion earthquakes, right? The important point is we've looked at both of the earthquakes, right? And then we also look at the lightning maps, right? So I'm sorry to have to go through all these images here um, but uh, This map let me pause for a second so I'm really sorry to pause this, but this is just the last, last 30 days of earthquakes. You can see actually California gets a lot of earthquakes. Uh, and same with uh, Alaska. And you can see there was just a brand new one maybe in the last few hours right there. So earthquakes. So it turns out that a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about spiritually actually does connect back, even though we're talking about the uh, fields of earth uh, and I'm gonna put this kind of skewed towards here the map and I'm sorry if it's hard to uh, see this all but uh, it turns out that all of this you know is interconnected um, in the terms of the discussion it's not it's not lightning it's not earthquakes it's not wind it's not it's everything that makes the universe important to study here so uh, and and basically when we talk about this poll, and I want to get into some more details, and I'm probably going to have to close out this discussion as soon as possible, but if this was a poll, and this is a poll, in terms of primarily also be a life field poll, and a life field would be all of the life connected in the universe, uh, including uh, just everything, right? You basically also maybe have another uh, third poll right through... Uh, uh, the center here in this map right we have uh, the Congo jungle so we basically have uh, a weird axis here um, that we could start to look at um, and then here and I want to kind of explain a couple of the diagrams here I'm gonna start with the uh, easiest one to explain which is maybe the uh, 
inclination, and I didn't want to have to start with this one, but uh, so the secular field is the year to year change. So these are the amount of skew in just one year. And you can see right here in the Amazon jungle, 30 uh, degrees uh, change. And that's a huge amount of change um, right there. And it's not exactly where you'd think in the jungle. Um, it's actually quite a little bit south uh, and I guess that would be east of where the Amazon empties. And here you can see uh, that actually in the uh, Congo, there's two sides. So it actually has shifted differently on either side of that. And there's some bubbles here that I've highlighted. You can see this big uh, bubble here in red uh, around the Amazon and then another big bubble here uh, that basically hits Sri Lanka and the tip here. And then there's an opposite bubble here, these purple bubbles here uh, that you might want to think about. So as well as we've been talking quite a lot about how this Tasmania may be connected through here. Um, and uh, there's also, you can see there's one, two, three bubbles here, this one here, and this one here, and then there's another one over here. And these have kind of uh, come up and they're kind of all this, actually there's probably one I should have circled right there as well. And so, uh, and the reason I did or didn't circle some of these, you know, is because uh, I want to leave some openness for you to think about this as well. And there's kind of these pathways uh, where things have stayed correct or have not changed. So these are the uh, areas, I wouldn't say correct is the right word. The, the correct, the way to say it is that there has been no change. So the earth, the earth decided to keep things the way that they are along these lines here, zero line for instance. So these have become extremely important on the inclination side. Uh, so let's see if we can get the declination. So uh, so one thing you might wanna notice here is that I actually circled primarily because I'm looking at the astrophysics as well. We're looking at a lot of factors, including gravity anomalies. And remember, if this is the pole here and this is a pole here, we actually see some sign on this side that this could be, but there's actually, this may have, this bubble may have actually moved uh, out, out from uh, the Caribbean out over closer to Africa. So it may actually uh, be a moving bubble down the Atlantic ocean there. Uh, it could actually be uh, an interesting uh, movement here. And you can see there's other ones uh, along here as well. So. Uh, and there's actually two on either side. There's, they're kind of paired here, and you can see there's a kind of a pair on either side here um, of how that might work. And these points here are important to think about. Um, and I'm really sorry, I'm kind of uh, dying out here on the discussion, uh, but this is some of the more interesting stuff in the discussion, uh, if you're interested in the details, of why you would have a field line connect with a physical line. So. The reason I'm circling these as important areas uh, on these points, like in here and, and whatnot, um, is because uh, we know that uh, the when you're talking about um, you know a higher dimensional uh, analysis of what's going on, uh, including uh, you know gravitational fields, electromagnetic and uh, nuclear forces, um, there's a lot where you have to start to look at how it would affect the actual uh, uh, activity, uh, the physical activity of the planet, the, which is actually the, the land masses, right? So these land masses, uh, the points at which it, 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 it crosses these land masses here are very important because you're basically having a field line that drops into an ocean line and heads out. So there are certain points there that are very interesting to look at. Um, so there's a lot of, essentially what I'm trying to stress here is that your diagram should probably not look like this at all. Um, and how you study this should probably be totally different. And the more different it is, the better, um, because, and the more I'd like to talk to you about what you are thinking about spiritually about certain points here. And you may want to take uh, these and take it seriously. Uh, you might use these as guides and maybe I would like to try to agree with something. Uh, with other people on, uh, which is basically uh, these wildlife poles or satanic access. So, uh, if if we're basically talking about the equator as a as a third axis, um, 
then we should, you know, we, we, we all agree that there's a north, it's spinning around the axis of the north and south pole, but what is going on here in terms of the spiritual side? So as we continue the discussion spiritually about our planet, uh, let's try to look at all the details here. And I tried to not draw these perfectly because I wanted to show some of the land masses here. And the declination, so again, the declination is the skew left or right. Uh, and the uh, and that's different. Now, you'll notice that this diagram here is totally different than this. And this is the one that you should probably start with. But actually, if you really just want to skip to the spirituality of things, it might be nice to just use the secular version. But honestly, uh, if you're going to talk to people about mathematics and the scientists are probably going to stick to this diagram primarily uh, because it's a hard fact. Um, and it doesn't change. The secular ones do change from year to year. So, uh, and that's exactly how it's defined. So it's like saying, I want to talk about uh, derivatives or integrals versus actually talking about the real equation. So this is the real equation that we're looking at here um, rather than the derivative of this equation, which is the change in the field, which is the secular map or the integral, right? Which would be the sum. So. Uh, but uh, certainly we don't even have the integral of this, uh, which is kind of mysterious. It would be probably valuable to look at that. So uh, maybe we contact uh, Noah here and look down here. This is the Noah. Um, but uh, we should definitely look at both. So uh, uh, basically, this is a starting point. This is how I started, and I don't recommend it, but it, you could look at this map first, the declination, and that's because it made it... It was very interesting to me to think that if I use a compass, I want to go north, right? You want to go north, but all of a sudden, as you're going north, it might start to skew off, even off to 90 degrees one way or the other, right? So that's a really stressful problem because trying to find the North Pole, you're never going to find the North Pole, right? You can never find it using a compass. So, uh, and that's a problem because it gets off by 40 degrees and unless you have this kind of map. So, and you can see that there's these bubbles here and this weird, uh, again, this is the shape for the U and V. So what I would recommend is using that map especially. So let me uh, stop this discussion for a second. Uh, I'm going to have to really take a break here, and I'm really sorry for this. Uh, so these are the maps here uh, that most people agree on, right? Uh, and that aren't, so like, like if you're really thinking about the higher dimensional stuff, uh, which is the spirituality stuff, you're probably uh, going to start with these maps and then, uh, because this is the facts, the, these are the truth, uh, no one can really debate this with you. So, uh, But even that, I would question carefully. So, And then I hear this dog barking, so I, I love my neighbor's dog there. They often play in the yard and they're, it sounds like they're having fun. It sounds like they're really vicious, but they're actually pretty funny dogs. But, uh, so, uh, again, what I want to say here is that this is the inclination map, this is the declination map, the field map, and the horizontal intensity, which is actually a new map that they just started publishing. Force is an interesting one, and I'm going to try to edit these later tonight uh, to show you what I've been thinking about a little bit more, and it's going to be pretty radically different than these drawings, and I wanted to just get you started on what I was thinking about here. So. Uh, but you can see uh, that there's some very interesting things in every little detail. And what I wanted to point out is this fact here, which I really was working on carefully. You notice how this field comes in this way, this way, this way, and this way, and it all balances in this weird little section right here. There's no uh, eye, if you will, in that point there, but there's a weird inflection point there. And there actually probably should be one right here on this pole as well. So I may actually mark mine up differently because there's something that should exist here similar to this shape, perhaps right over the Caribbean uh, to make that satanic access or wildlife access valid. Um, and remember, we're talking about billions of years and these field diagrams probably have changed a lot. But over millions of years, and even billions of years, some of these same continents may actually have looked the same or very similar. So uh, it's important to realize that the actual map can be very helpful. And that's why we want to look at the earthquake map, the 
lightning map and all these other things so and don't man and i'm really sorry to be having this discussion right now i put my picture on this um here a little bit larger than usual um but i'm really embarrassed to talk about some of these uh things here because honestly i we're not really having a very healthy conversation about this because we should be talking about the spiritual stuff of what's going on with our planet, right? And that's really where the discussion is trying to go here. We're trying to look at that a little bit better. Um, so again, here I kind of circled this whole area. Now it doesn't really show up at all on on this line here, but it kind of the declination model. Essentially, you have this uh, spot right in here, and you have these areas out into Hawaii and even off into these islands here. Um, and then you have this spot here. So I actually am trying uh, to look at kind of a complicated perspective of the entire electromagnetic spectrum, gravity, everything, not just the raw field, right? So when, when no matter how you draw these diagrams, and I thought this would be really funny for kids to do, if, uh, if even if you're a little kid, it's fun to just scribble on this map of Earth uh, and see what you think about what's going on and just come up with some ideas about how things work spiritually, right? Um, because essentially what we're talking about is uh, the spiritual side of the planet here. So, uh, and that should be really fun to work on, hopefully. So, uh, and and maybe I'll just close on this because I wanna get off of this discussion as soon as possible. So, uh, the jungle, uh, it turns out that these, what we're really talking about in terms of these satanic excess and poles, we've done so much bad to the earth that it could be that the jungle now is kind of uh, perceived as as uh, dangerous and bad, actually evil, right? What we've done to the jungle is, is actually kind of bad here, right? So uh, all these diagrams kind of show uh, more details this is the weather pattern so we're not really looking at the electromagnetic spectrum but we're looking at some of the weather patterns here and you can start to see uh how that works as well as the wildlife uh here in the jungle and you can see in the congo uh there's some sections here uh, i definitely wanted to talk about uh but i haven't gotten to yet so i'm gonna hopefully publish some of that later but uh there's just so much here to look at so uh, but again uh, on the secular side you know you basically have this field intensity maps and you can see that there definitely is a point here where it could have been here and there's definitely a point here on this line and you can see how the field intensity has changed a uh, hundred points here in some areas uh, you know which is an unbelievable amount so uh, and then horizontal intensity and you can see there's kind of these pathways here with a section and you can kind of see the convergence so we're not just looking at the bubbles here uh, this is the actual magnetic south pole and I didn't even circle that here uh, because of the importance of thinking about uh, the uh, coordinate system uh, here so uh, but basically there's quite a lot uh, to look at and then here you can see it back to the inclination map again and I've circled certain islands here you can see there's a point here so this is a mysterious thing where the field the field is actually maybe even connected or even disconnected uh, with the island or other islands so you have uh, some interesting questions there um, so uh, and here you can kind of see on the declination that it definitely is pulling up here but why is this move down here when it should be uh, out there and you can see it's all coming maybe up from the south pole uh, with another one through here so quite a lot of discussion just on this one chart and i'm really sorry to actually uh, discuss the details so yeah i need to catch uh, some breath here um and i'll just hold up the globe here um here really quick but uh yeah and and basically you can uh take a look at uh a lot of these details and uh anyway so i hope you've enjoyed this discussion on on kind of the spirituality of our planet uh certainly like a very big introduction here um and there's a lot of room for your ideas um so i just wanted to like think about uh, you for a second and what your situation might be um, so no matter where we live on the planet um, I wanted to encourage you not to just uh, say oh, this point or that point um, these are satanic poles if you go here 
expect to die. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you could, you could, there, there could be serious problems uh, in the middle of the jungle uh, and different areas here. So it's not necessarily wise uh, to even know some of this stuff. Uh, but, uh, and what I would say is I grew up in Chicago um, on one side of the field line. And it turns out that you may want to know the people on the opposite side of your field line to balance things out. So as you think about working on some of these problems, uh, where you're born or where you grew up, uh, whether it's looking at, you know, the lightning maps here or whatever, um, you know, you can see like this, this doesn't tell you about uh, hurricanes, for instance, or it doesn't tell you about... Uh, tornadoes uh, where I grew up there was a lot of tornadoes um, maybe where you grew up there's a lot of hurricanes there's all kinds of other ways to balance out what how the it's like asking which point on a sphere is best and like it, like the Aurora okay so this is great it's great to see lightning but there's no lightning on the North Pole or South Pole but guess what you have on the North Pole and the South Pole you have the Aurora so it's really ironic that uh, you might say oh all I care about is lightning but then someone else might say all I care about is the Aurora and that's actually on the North Pole or South Pole where there is no lightning. So uh, there's really a, a lot of perspectives. And I wanted to emphasize also that if you're not a scientist or, or a mathematician or whatever, um, we need your help more than ever. Because honestly, um, what happens here is that if you go through the amount of math and science that I've been through at a top university uh, from on the planet, essentially, in math or science, one of the problems is that you really have to study your stuff so in terms of math and science but the problem is you don't necessarily know about the spirituality side of things uh, and have a good uh, feeling for things spiritually or just even be a nice person so if you're a really nice person I definitely want to work with you regardless of your education I really care about working with really nice and friendly people um, on these topics um, especially with wildlife um, you know, I, I have done most of my work on the South Pole, and that's where this all started. Uh, the discussion, you know, I'm going to zoom out here, um, but you know, just looking at, uh, you know, how this all got started with Antarctica. And it's so funny we're upside down here in Antarctica, uh, but this is how it started for me personally. But how it starts for you, uh, man, that looks like a brain to me. So that started me thinking, uh, yeah, it's a physical fact, but it doesn't take. A PhD in mathematics or uh, astrophysics to start working on this it actually required and the kind of homework that you have to, if you're gonna think I, I saw a funny diagram the other day pretty much everyone successful on our planet dropped out of college right I, I went to I was homeschooled uh, and, and things like that you have to learn what you want to learn and make sure that works well with the entire universe it's not just what you want to learn, though. There is a value in getting a uh, generalized education, um, but uh, you want to be cautious because you're just going to know what everyone else knows. So, uh, and here you can see this little guy here. So, uh, so wow, uh, we've talked about a lot of stuff uh, here, and uh, I hope that you've really enjoyed everything. Um, and, and lastly, you know, we're looking at a lot of images of the Congo here and and uh, the wildlife. So and, and I, I'm going to go take a walk and then come back and really finalize this discussion, hopefully, as soon as possible. But, man, the universe is going to be awesome, right? And let's keep it that way. Let's try to keep talking about really good things here as we discuss this. And look at what's happened to the wildlife. It's really, uh, all of Africa may have been red at one point. It's basically down to a few spots here. And all of this certainly should be red uh, with life and things. And this is the equator right here. Um, we've kind of populated the planet, but we need to rethink about how to work with the wildlife. And that's why I got into this whole concept of a wildlife pole or a satanic pole, because uh, you know, as we look at these uh, diagrams and we edit them and make some changes of what we think, uh, you know, all these different maps, uh, you know, there's just a lifetime of work here, right? So, uh, and, and really what, what we need is people that have really good spiritual keys. If you've been thinking about spirituality your whole entire life, uh, and then now's the time to dive into some of the the the, the, the images and pictures 
you can really contribute a lot. And I would say never even look at these maps again. Like, you could walk outside, and that's what I'm going to do in a moment. I hope to never look at any of this stuff ever again. Like, I'm, I'm trying to never, never look at that. This is not the way that I want to see the Earth. You know, I want to see it as the people. And there's some, I, you know, the, the animals, and uh, talk with the animals and do some other fun things with my life here. But, you know, this is just this is kind of humorous and remember the way we started this conversation was pretty humorous because man look at the absurdity of all the details here uh and really what 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 we need to remember uh is that you know i've circled things here and they're going to be interesting um but like i said with that example uh you know of the aurora and the lightning and all these other factors um you know that basically we really need to uh, work together. Um, so there's going to be a balance uh, between, uh, I don't know if you've been reading some of the details that I've been talking about in terms of manifolds and higher dimensional mathematics and all that. There's a lie, right? There's a there's a 100% lie in the math and science game, and that's that they say that they know what they're doing and that you know you should sit on Facebook or YouTube and listen to me or anyone else. Like, what matters is 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 the everybody's ideas and the and the individuals. When you really look at the the math carefully, you start to see that there's a circle in in the manifold, and that basically it's going to collapse. That that the uh, all this mathematics eventually collapses onto a uh, onto a whole another domain, and that's the spiritual domain. So we're basically starting to look at the tip of that, and it could be that the imaginary space is bigger than the real space um and when you look at that mathematically you start to realize what i'm talking about is that the spiritual side of things is probably more important in some respect in fact it's is 100 percent more important so definitely uh it's okay to look at some of this stuff uh that i've been talking about but like i said i'm not gonna look at this ever again hopefully not um unless someone has some really good spiritual ideas uh, that they've noticed and then I can maybe talk with you about it um, you know there's we could go on and on talking about the math and then just say it's gonna collapse so anyway uh, I'll be back in a little bit I hope you've enjoyed this discussion uh, thank you so much so I'll tell you a funny thing uh, before I go on a walk here is that uh, you know the Sun is setting right now and you know in some religions they pray based on the position of the stars and the sun and every time you know in uh, for example uh, in, in some religion you know it, it, for example if the shadow is equal to the actual size of the object or different things like that okay so I'm back okay I hope this makes you laugh I'm gonna tell you something hilarious in a second here you ready for this I hope you go to hell and especially if you're a scientist, I especially hope that you change your mind about things, about how the planet works, about how the universe works. If you've fallen asleep during this presentation, what you didn't realize is that the kind of information we just talked about, this is some of the most important science ever, right? And you know what we need to do? We need to go to hell. That science needs to go to hell, right? All of it needs to be done. And the funny thing here, the funny thing here is that you matter. You listening to this, the birds, the animals, the wildlife, everything, all that, all the stuff really matters. You could go to hell if you want. You can go visit the satanic poles. Go to hell, right? But And you can go to hell mathematically. You can study all these details forever. You can go on and on. You could spend, you get your PhD. You could sit around and listen to these videos. I hope you never see this video again. I hate this video. I'm going to hell just by trying to talk about this because I should be outside and doing more fun things. Go to hell, right? But man, maybe not. Uh, you know, be careful here. Uh, there's a lot of ways to think about this, and it's not just your way to think about this. You will go to hell if it's just your way. Trust me, um, you need to listen to the universe and think about everything. So uh, take a look at all this. Uh, I'm really thankful uh, to be able to try to explain to you some of these details. Um, and certainly, uh, 
you know, uh, uh, whatever you're thinking about, uh, take a look at things. Uh, but this is a map. You can sit around here and look at this kind of stuff forever. Um, I'm trying to get, like I said, I never want to have to really have a serious discussion about this ever again. Uh, you know, I we're, we're kind of, I, I, yeah, me right here. Hi, guys. We're talking about the most important science ever. They've never been able to visualize this. Look at 100,000 earthquakes on a single map. Look at the entire electromagnetic spectrum. We just looked at all the lightning maps. All the earthquake maps. I mean, we looked at everything. Right here. Me and you. We've seen it all. Now is the time to actually think about everything else, right? So, and really start having a great life. And living on Earth together, um, you know, with the wildlife too. So, uh, let's try to uh, really be careful here with the wildlife, right? And, and think about the problems on our planet. So... Uh, thank you so much. I pray for you and everybody else that you never, yes, uh, that you be careful about all of this and be also just have fun too. So anyway, I'll see you later. Thank you so much.